Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romance books that have second chances in them. I know this is not a fan favorite trope. I do know quite a few of my booktube friends where second chance romances are kind of like a big turn off for them when they hear about a book and has second chance romance in it. They're like, ooh, no, I don't really know about that. Not a fan of second chance romances. I, however, happen to love second chance romances. I have been burned in the past by them, so I understand the aversion to second chance romances because sometimes the reason why the couple breaks up the first time is really like, y'all should have stayed broken based off of what happened the first time. So these are romances where the second chance part was really beautiful to me. Like I can really appreciate a couple getting back together after a certain period of time, whether they needed to just grow in their life or do other things, go on different paths. And who knows later on in life, they might be two totally different people, but still be in love with each other. Now, I'm not that big of a fan of um, like, the reason why the couple breaks up in the first place is because it's what one of the characters did to the other person. Like one of them was horrible. Those are second chance romances that I don't like or if, like one character breaks up with the other person because they're being a crappy person, you know? Um, that's something I don't like. All of these romances aren't like that. They're like probably most of them are the reason why they broke up for the first time is because of an external conflict. First, I have a new favorite of mine, which is Blayheart by Sophie Lark. This is the fourth book in the Brutal Birthright series. Okay, so the Brutal Birthright series is a mafia romance series all surrounding like kind of like the same family. Um, and so in this one, we have Dante and Simone. The first part of this book is when they first fell in love when Dante accidentally, like not accidentally, he steals a car not knowing that there's someone in the back of the car. So he steals a car and accidentally also steals Simone because Simone is in the car. So that's their meet cute moment. <laughs> they meet because he stole her car um, or her family car, whatever the case may be. Um, and so yeah, the two of them slowly start to fall in love, but there's a forbidden aspect because her father would not approve of Dante whatsoever because he knows of his ties to the mafia. Then something happens where the two of them split up, break apart. It's been many years later since they've seen each other and Simone may or may not have kept the baby that she had with Dante a secret this whole time and Dante never knows that he has had a child this whole time. Um, and then this book takes place, as I said before, years later where they have to reconnect and the two of them have never stopped loving each other. I love this one so much. Uh, I think the second chance romance part in here was done phenomenally well. The reason why they broke up was totally reasonable and under, like understandable to me. Simone wanted to protect her baby and she did not want her baby to be involved in the mafia whatsoever because it could be very dangerous, obviously. Um, and Dante kind of scared her with some things that happened to him in the book involving the mafia. So I thought them reconnecting and everything was beautiful, amazing. I of course didn't love all the secret keeping in here. I don't like secret keeping in romances at all, but there was a reason why Simone was, she was protecting her son. So I really love this one and I really recommend it. What would a recommendation video from me be without a mention of a Ruby Dixon book? This one is one of my favorites and a fan favorite in the IPB series. We have Barbarian's Heart. This is book number 10 in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. And this one is also one of the only amnesia books that I've loved. So in this book, uh, Stacy and Pashoff have already been mated for quite a while and they have a son. Um, I think his name's Pacey, if I remember correctly. Um, but some things happen in the previous book and novella that take place before this. That's why I really recommend reading these books in order because there is an order to them. And if you want to know the order to read the IPB series, including the novellas and all that stuff, I will link down below my guide to reading the series video. By some circumstances you read about in the previous books, um, Pashoff gets hit in the head with something and he does not remember the past couple years of his life. And it was just a couple years ago that these women have crashed on this ice planet and have started to be mated to these men and have babies. And so he does not remember his mate at all or his son. And so Stacy is very brokenhearted, obviously, that her mate does not remember her whatsoever. And she's having to take care of her son all by herself now because Pashoff does not understand what is going on. He does not 
really understand how Pacey could be his son if he can't remember him. But Pashoff is so sweet. I love him. This one is so good because you really get to read about these two falling in love all over again. So it is a second chance romance because they're falling in love for a second time. So good. I love this one. This one's definitely a fan favorite. I know a lot of other people love this one in the series too. Next, I have Damaged Goods by Talia Hibbert. This is book number 1.5, a part of the Ravenswood series. I really recommend reading this book after you read A Girl Like Her, which is book one. So this is kind of like a novella because the heroine in this book was like, kind of like the villain a little bit or kind of like the mean girl in book one. This is like kind of like her redemption story. You learn about what's happened to her and why she is the way she is and why she was so rude to the heroine in book one. It's because she is living in a very abusive household and she does not know what to do. And so she ends up being pregnant by the man who's abusing her, her husband. And so when this woman realizes that she's pregnant, she does not want to be a part of her husband's life whatsoever. She's like, I'm gonna protect this baby and I'm not gonna make this baby go through what he has made me go through. And so she decides to kind of like run away, escape to this vacation town she used to go to a lot with her family growing up. And there she meets kind of like the boy who was all of her firsts, her first kiss, her first time, like everything. He still lives in this town and they reconnect and they fall in love. Even if she's carrying another man's baby, he does not care. He's always wanted her and he is so happy that she is back in his life. This one was so cute. But be aware there are a bunch of like darker elements in here too, especially with um, spousal, is that a word, spousal abuse? Um, the husband does come back in on page at one point, so please be aware of that. Next is again The Magic by Lisa Kleypas, a favorite in the historic romance sphere. This is the romance between Aileen and McKenna, and Aileen is kind of like this high society lady, the daughter of some well-to-do guy, and McKenna works in the stables on their property. And growing up, the two of them fall in love. I think like they're in their teens or something like that. They end up falling in love and plan to like run away, get married or whatever. Her father ends up hearing wind of this and basically tells Aileen, if you do not break this off and make him leave, I will kill him um, because there's no way you're marrying a stable boy. And so to protect the love of her life, she goes up to him and tells her, tells him that she's never loved him and that she wants him to leave and that she was just pretending the whole time, even though she wasn't. Um, and so McKenna believes every word that she says, stupidly he does. So he believes every word that she says, runs off to America, makes a name for himself, gets fabulously wealthy in America, comes back years later to seek retribution for the, all the pain that Aileen caused him. There's a reason why a lot of people give this book five stars. It's because it's beautiful and amazing. And I think totally worth the hype. Um, this book will break you and emotionally wreck you. Once McKenna realizes what Aileen did for him, Let's just say we got some groveling in there, if you know what I mean. One book that I've read recently that is similar to Again the Magic is Nobody's Duke by Scarlett Scott. So this one is kind of like the same vibes as Again the Magic. Our heroine and hero live next door to each other in like these big mansions. Um, like they're the respective children of the men who rule their houses, whatever. And um, they're actually from rivaling families. And so they meet in secret in the woods and they fall in love and they plan to run away together to get married. But the night that they run away together, the heroine uh, gets jilted essentially. The hero never shows up and she is devastated and immediately hates him for what he did and she is heartbroken. But in his case, he was waiting for her to come to him and then um, these men come and attack him and beat him to a pulp, scar him forever. Like he has a scar on his face for forever now. And he blames the heroine because no one else knew where they were going. So he's like, oh, she must have told her father and he came to essentially kill me almost. And so he's never forgiven her for telling her father. She never actually told her father. So the two of them don't like each other for different reasons, but Anyway, it's years later, the heroine has been married and she has a son. Her husband was recently murdered and the same man who's out, who murdered her husband is now out to murder her. So kind of like the police in this situation have asked the hero to be her bodyguard. So he's now her bodyguard and it's a second chance romance and they're forced to spend some time together while he's protecting her. And the truth finally comes out of what happened that night and they're like, oh. <laughs> 
So there's a lot of amazing things going on in this book. I loved it. It gave me a lot of, again, the magic vibes. Next, I have a novella. It's a dragon shifter romance called Wyvern by Grace Draven. This is just a very short uh, novella. Our heroine in here, I think her name's Elizabeth, El Elsabeth, Elsabeth. Um, she's a very talented fiddler and um, she lives in this town where there's a dragon like going over their lands and people are scared. And so they're like, you need to go to this where this dragon is and go like kind of like lure him and tame him with your fiddling skills like magical fiddling skills whatever and so she has no other choice but to go do it to save her village and so she does and then this dragon for some reason really reminds her of the love that she lost years ago and he may or may not be the same guy that she fell in love with years ago and just so happens to be a dragon shifter and she never knew <laughs> um so yeah it's very short Fun. I, of course, love Grace Raven and I love dragon romances. Next is An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn. This is the third book in the Bridgerton series. This is Benedict's book. Now, I hate book Benedict, so we're not gonna... <laughs> We're not gonna hype up Book Benedict in this situation, but this series and this book is good. Like, I like it. So basically, this one's about Sophie and Benedict, and they first meet at a masquerade ball, and the two of them immediately, like, fall in love with each other essentially and so this is a cinderella retelling uh yeah the two of them see each other later on in life and benedict slowly realizes that this may or may not be the same girl he basically fell in love with at this ball and um that's what i'm gonna say it's a great cinderella retelling i mainly love this book because of sophie i love sophie and if she's not in the show i'm gonna be mad I'm gonna be really mad because I really like Sophie. Another historical that I have for you is The Mark Hessenai by Stacey Reed. So this is another historical essentially where our heroine falls in love with a guy that her father does not approve of and the father threatens to ruin him or kill him if she doesn't break off their relationship. So that's essentially what happened here. Our heroine falls in love with this guy, but he is not wealthy whatsoever. He does not have a title and that's the restrictions that her parents have for marriage is you have to marry a wealthy titled man and he's not neither of those things. And so they're like, you better end it with him or we will ruin him. And so that's what she does. And the hero has been very upset about this ever since and blames her for everything that's happened. Um, it's years later, he now has a title because everyone above him in the title ranking has died from scarlet fever. So he hates the position that he's put in because all of his loved ones have died and he hates this. And he has to go to a ball to find a wife for reasons because he needs an heir now um and he ends up coming across the woman who broke his heart all those years ago but she has changed she now is visually impaired and can't see she's blind and he is very shocked he's like why haven't haven't i heard of this like i thought like you would have at least come out to me or like i could have helped you in some way and there's a little bit of a secret as to why the heroine won't tell him what happened to her and how she became blind so the two of them reconnecting and um realizing that they never stopped loving each other next is rookie move by serena bowen this is a hockey romance and this is the romance between what are their names what are their names leo and georgia <laughs> and leo and georgia were high school sweethearts um they were very much in love but then unfortunately georgia gets sexually assaulted by a man not leo and she is forever changed because of this there's a lot of trauma and a lot of things that happen to you after something like that obviously and she now believes that she is damaged goods for leo she's like how could he ever be with a woman like me who's experienced something like this and she's like i have to let him go because he deserves way better than me and so that's what she does. And she's also very hurt and doesn't think she's in a position at the moment to be in a relationship at all because of what's happened to her recently. Like she's not comfortable. And so it's a couple years later and Georgia now works for the uh, hockey team that her dad is the coach of, the Brooklyn Bruisers. And they get a rookie, they get a new player. And it happens to be Leo. And so the two of them reconnect and fall in love all over again. I really enjoyed this one. It's one of my favorites in the series and I really recommend it if you wanna get into a hockey romance. And the last one I wanna mention really fast, <laughs> probably my least favorite out of them but I know that some people like it so whatever <laughs> we have love in other words by Christina Lauren I read this back in almost a year ago in 2021 and ever since then my thoughts of this book have just like declined so <laughs> when I read it though it was a five star read so I know that people love this one I don't love it as much as I used to but I thought I'd recommend it to people who might like it. Um, but our hero and heroine here, um, they essentially grow up next door neighbors to each other, but only over like the summer, the hero basically lives in this town and the heroine and her dad 
only come to the house next door to them over the summer. That's like their vacation home. The two of them fall in love as kids, like teenagers, and they grow up, fall in love, but they break up for a reason. And the whole entire book, you don't know why they broke up almost until the end. And it's years later and they reconnect, um, but she's in a relationship already and he's slowly starting to try to break them, not break them up. He's not trying to do that, but he's just like, you deserve better. I'm that person, I'm right here. So break up with him. There's a little bit of cheating in here. And then the reason why they broke up, like that's the main turnoff for me with this book is if the reason why they broke up was way better, I like this book way better. But the reason why they broke up, garbage, garbage to me. So this book, is way it's a way lower rating than i first put this book at but i do know that other people like it so that's why i'm putting it in this video i don't know why i'm not used to talking about books i don't like in recommendation videos so do y'all want me not to put books that i don't like in recommendation videos let me know down below please <laughs> anyway so you have it those are 10 second chance romance recommendations for you please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me any of the like people emoji where they're holding hands with somebody because it's so cute uh but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all